Okay, so we just finished all cell structures for eukaryotes. Now let's talk about prokaryotes. Just a reminder of what we have, what I've said beforehand. All of life on Earth can be categorized into three groups, right? All of them. You are either a bacteria, an archaea, or a eukaryote. Now, bacteria and archaea are all under this group called prokaryotes, whereas everything else like plants animals you me fungi right all same thing we are all eukaryotes so let's talk about prokaryotes in more detail we will focus particularly on bacteria in our syllabus now prokaryotes what does the name mean pro means before like pre right karyo or karyon stands for nucleus so before nucleus uh, which means no nucleus eukaryotes you eu means true karyon means nucleus so eukaryotes have nucleus have a true nucleus and this includes um, plants animals fungi and other microbes now we have a lot of similarities but here are the main characteristics of prokaryotic cells all right they are all unicellular okay so all of bacteria and archaea are unicellular they are relatively smaller in size than uh, eukaryotic cells eukaryotes are say 10 to 100 micrometers in terms of diameter However, prokaryotic cells are around 1 to 5 micrometers only. So they are very small in comparison. And they are also a lot simpler in structure and divides by binary fission instead of other um, mitosis um, or meiosis methods or reproduction. Okay, anyways, uh, what all bacteria do not have is this. It does not have membrane bound organelles okay it's red it's bold it's important prokaryotic cells are unicellular and does not have any membrane bound organelles what do we mean by membrane bound organelles think chloroplasts mitochondria okay those who have a membrane outside it so think of uh, er golgi these are all membrane bound not even nucleus there is no nucleus in the bacteria this is the like this is the like main feature of a prokaryote right dna actually lies free in the cytoplasm and the area where it lies free is vaguely called the nucleoid region it is not bound in the nucleus now what they have okay compared to us right like us like eukaryotes they have the plasma membrane cytoplasm however when they have cell walls, it's not made of cellulose, it is made of peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan. Peptido, peptido, okay, sounds like peptides. And peptides are another word for protein. Glycan, okay, sounds like glyco, right? And you're right. It sounds like carbohydrates. So peptidoglycan is actually a mixture of protein, okay, protein molecules as well as sugar. That is peptidoglycan cell wall. That's how you make sense of the name, peptidoglycan. Um, specifically, it's made of chains cross-linked by amino acids, which are protein. Now, what do they have also? They also have 70S ribosomes, not 80S. 80S ribosomes are only found in eukaryotes. Bacteria has 70S ribosomes. Okay, they also have circular DNA. Now, circular DNA looks is also double helix, but it comes back to itself. Right, so I would draw it something like this. Now it's a terrible drawing, but you get what I mean. Okay, it, it's double helix, but it 
comes back and joins back to itself right here. DNA is naked, we call it naked, and is not associated with proteins. I've mentioned a protein called histones in my previous lecture. This is a protein we are talking about. There are no histones in bacteria. However, there are other proteins, other proteins that are like histones in bacteria and bind to DNA too. Okay, so when we say DNA naked, we just mean no histones. Okay, so we talked about what prokaryotic cells have and not have. What do they sometimes have? Um, what is only present in some bacteria? Number one is plasmids. Plasmids are small circular DNA that codes for non-essential proteins. A bacteria can have a few of them. So they have a large, right? Bacteria would have a central chromosome, right? Or we would say bacterial DNA, which is also circular, it's large, and it codes for essential proteins. However, uh, plasmids, again, small, circular, non-essential. Another thing that could be present in some bacteria, not all, and but some bacteria only produces it sometimes, and other times it doesn't have it, is pili. Pili is for sexual production, uh, not like the one you are thinking right now but more for attachment to other cells or surfaces kind of like a bridge so that they can uh, exchange genetic material now uh, the next one is flagellum and flagellum was something we talked about just now briefly saying that it is not cilia it's not microvilli in prokaryotic cells this finger-like extensions for locomotion is called flagellum and it allows the bacteria to swim and move. Capsule, also another structure sometimes present, is another layer outside the plasma membrane and the peptidoglycan cell wall. Right? So it's you can see here, plasma membrane first, then the peptidoglycan cell wall, and then right outside there, there's a capsule. Now, bacteria with capsule have additional protection and are able to attach to different surfaces using the capsule. Okay, maybe more grip or something. Number five, infoldings of the plasma membrane or mesosomes. You can see one here. Okay, it's like a plasma membrane, but it's like instead of the plasma membrane being like this, it comes in a little bit from some structure and then comes out. So the plasma membrane is like folded what it is what is it for well mesosomes are usually in bacteria for photosynthesis or nitrogen fixation okay so they fix nitrogen to make food photosynthesis is they absorb sunlight to make food so mesosomes in general is to well make food <laughs> so um why do they need it well they are they don't have any membrane bound organelles right so they don't have mitochondria they don't have chloroplasts therefore they have this okay so i don't know if you realize but you can see some similarities between prokaryotes mitochondria and chloroplasts now first of all there are about the same size. They are around one micrometer to five micrometers big, okay? Actually, the mitochondria chloroplasts are on the smaller side. They are around one micrometer each. Chloroplasts a little bit bigger than the mitochondria. But the point stands, they are within this range of size. You realize that they have both small circular DNA. So prokaryotic cells have small circular DNA which are called plasmids and also a central um, DNA which is also circular and the mitochondria chloroplasts we do not call it plasmid but they also have small circular DNA they also all three of them have 70 S ribosomes which are very different well kind of different smaller than the ADS ribosomes found in usual eukaryotic cells. And 
they all divide by binary fission, not mitosis, not meiosis, but binary fission. So, why is that? Why does it have so similar phages? And that is because of this theory called the endosymbiotic theory. And you can watch the video on your own, but the very short version is this. We believe that some point in evolution, the prokaryote cells were here first. So bacteria and archaea are much older, like have existed on the planet much longer than we have. And uh, for the formation of nucleus, this was result of infoldings of plasma membrane that looks like this. And later on, mitochondria and chloroplasts okay, are formed because this particular like prokaryote ingested and gulf another different bacteria Okay, one that can photosynthesize. Okay, bacteria that can photosynthesize are called um, cyanobacterium. Can photosynthesize. And also another bacterium that is able to carry out aerobic respiration. And over time, over time, these bacteriums became part of the cell and therefore form the eukaryotes. Now another supporting um, feature, so another supporting structure of this particular theory is that mito and chloro as well as nucleus, they all have double membranes. And why do they have double membranes? Now, it might have been because, well, it was engulfed. So they have their own membrane and then they have the vesicle that have formed around it. Okay, here, there's one membrane here. And there's another membrane here too, as you can see. How cool is that? So again, you can watch this YouTube video on your own. I'll link it in below. This is not in syllabus, but I thought it was incredibly fascinating and explains so much of the structures that we see in eukaryotes and prokaryotes.